In previous videos, we looked at functions with one input variable and several output variables. We called these vector functions. In this video, we'll look instead at functions with several input variables and one output variable. These are called functions of several variables. Consider the function of two variables f of xy equals the square root of x times y. Notice that this function has two input variables, x and y, and when I plug in numbers for x and y, for example, 5 for x and 2 for y, I get the square root of 5 times 2, or the square root of 10, which is a real number. But not all input values for x and y give me a real number as output. For example, if I compute f of 5, negative 2, that gives me the square root of negative 10, which is not a real number. The domain of f is all values x, y, such that f of x, y is a real number. In this example, since f involves the square root function, the domain of f will be all pairs x and y, such that x times y is bigger than or equal to 0. Since I can take the square root of a number that's bigger or equal to 0 and get a real number, but not the square root of a negative number. Now, x times y is greater than or equal to 0 if x and y are both positive, or if x and y are both negative, or if x or y is 0. If I graph this domain on the xy plane, it'll consist of the first quadrant, the third quadrant, and the x and y axes. To understand what the graph of the function might look like, it can be handy to look at its level curves. The level curves are the curves for which f of xy is a constant. For example, f of xy equals 1, or f of xy equals 0, or f of xy equals 5 are examples of level curves. If I use the formula for f of xy, this first level curve corresponds to square root of x times y equals 1, or in other words, x times y equals 1. I can graph this level curve on the xy plane. It looks like a hyperbola. The second level curve is where the square root of x times y equals 0. That corresponds to x times y equals 0, which is where x equals 0 or y equals 0. x equals 0 is the y-axis, and y equals 0 is the x-axis. So this level curve consists of two intersecting lines. The next level curve is where the square root of x times y is 5. That corresponds to x times y equals 25, which is also a hyperbola that goes through the point 5, 5, and negative 5, negative 5. If I think of f of x, y as representing the height of a mountain at coordinates x, y, then these level curves correspond to lines of equal height, or contour lines. Let me label them with their heights. So my mountain is going up as I travel away from the origin in either direction. A function with two input variables can be represented by a graph in three dimensions by setting z equal to f of x, y. In other words, for this example, we set z equal to the square root of x, y, and we graph points of the form x, y, z that satisfy our equation. Remember our graph of level curves told us that our function had height 0 along the x and y axis and then increased in height as we went away from the origin in the first and third quadrant. I can try to translate that into a 3D graph. It might look something like this. I can get a better picture using graphing software. And here's another picture from a different angle. Notice that if I hold an x value constant and increase the y values, I get something that looks kind of like a square root curve. That agrees with our equation. If I hold x constant at, say, 5 and let y vary, then I get f of 5y is the square root of 5y, which looks like a square root curve transformed a bit. 
Similarly, I can hold y fixed, say y equals 3, for example, and let x vary, and I also get a square root looking curve in this direction. That again agrees with our equation, so we're letting x vary, we're holding y at 3, we get the square root of 3x. This is a transformed square root curve in the plane y equals 3 that's parallel to the xv plane. In this video, we talked about the domain, the level curves, and the graph of the function f of xy equals the square root of xy.